Hi, my name is Tan, and I'm from Clang. So I've been accumulating a lot of FPV parts through the time I've been uh, in this hobby. So I decided to actually build a Protect 35. And I want to walk you guys through this. So maybe some of the problems I overcome while building this custom Protect 35 might come useful to you if you run into the same problems as well. Now, first off, I still would recommend for you to buy a bind and fly of a Protect 35 rather than trying to build it yourself because this is intended to take a Beast AIO at the bottom as well as an air unit on top. So which we which leads us into our first problem. I didn't read the spec sheets when I bought this frame. So I didn't know that the mounting holes for the stack was actually a 20 by 20 or the diamond shape over here that draws like so, that's a 25 by 25. The iFlight Beast AIO, uh, flight controller slash ESC AIO, is actually 25 by 25. And uh, I only own 30 by 30 stacks. So my solution is to drill through them. How I managed to get my four holes is to try to get one of these um, spacers. And once you drill the first hole, just put a M3 screw through it and continue drilling the other holes based off this one. And please, while you're doing this, to put in the prop guards occasionally just to measure that the stack is going to fit and not touch any of the side of the prop guards as it folds in. Because for mine, the ESC was actually touching the bottom of the prop guards a little bit. So I had to file the edge of my ESC a little bit and that was quite disheartening to do, but I had a problem, I wanted to solve it, and that was my only solution. So now that your stack's in there, you could wire up your motors to the ESC, put the flight controller on top, add whatever other accessories you need, you need the RX, and you need the video transmission system. As I've explained before, the height of this, it actually accommodates only a beast AIO at the bottom, as well as an air unit on top. So once I put the stack over there, I did not have enough height. I couldn't put my air unit light on top, so I opted to put it at the back. But as you can see, it kind of um, hourglasses towards the back here. So instead of stacking the Vista normally, I opted to stack the Vista sideways. Even that leads to another problem. The Vista at 90 degrees is still too tall for the height of this frame. For me, I opted to basically raise raise the stack. You can see little yellow 3D printed parts in here. And uh, that's actually some uh, M2 spacers that I've printed to distance the top plate from the uh, prop guards. And uh, basically I put one M2 spacer for each screw that goes in, like so. What that accumulates to is just a real mess of uh, wiring of the crossfire having to be right beside that overheating air unit as well as the GPS wire crossing and all that whatnots. I've already tested this quad out and uh, it flies. It flies pretty good because um, I've put beta flight in here and I surely put uh, UAV tech's uh, presets of his pits and whatnot for Cinewoops. And, it's, and right now it's not scoring me a very impressive amount of average flight time, but it will do for now until I fly this a little bit more, tweak it a little bit, and I'll update you guys if I manage to improve the flight performance of this. But for now, I consider this built and ready to fly. I hope you found this walkthrough useful and you managed to succeed in your custom build as well or this convince you not to attempt the custom build. Anyway, my name is Tan, I'm from Clan and have a nice day.